Welcome back to the channel. For this video, we're going to walk through how to create the SFTP server on AWS with the out-of-the-box solution provided by AWS. This out-of-the-box solution only allows authentication using SSH keys. It does not allow authentication using passwords. We're going to cover using passwords for authentication in the next video. In this video, we're going to create the SFTP server, the S3 bucket to store the files, and the different IAM roles and policies that will restrict either base user access that can only download files or admin access that can both download, upload, and delete files. Those are the components we're going to be creating on AWS. I'm on a Windows machine, so to create the SSH keys we're going to use to authenticate, I'm going to use putty gen. And to sign in to our SFTP server after it's created, I'm going to use WinSCP. Feel free to substitute tools that you find more convenient for your setup to follow along in this video series if you want. All right, so let's get started. First step in this video is we need to copy the code from the GitHub repo. So I've created this GitHub repo AWS FTP server. You'll find the link in the description below. Once you get here, you can clone the repo. Before we get started though, you can help me out a lot by doing a few simple things. Sponsor this on GitHub sponsors, sponsor me on Patreon, subscribing to the channel, liking this video and sharing on platforms you use like Reddit, Discord, or just talking to your friends, starting the repo on GitHub, and also follow me on GitHub. All these things help me out a lot. I really appreciate it. So let's get started. Like I said, let's clone the repo. Copy the code, go to your terminal, git, clone, paste the repo. Once you have it cloned to your local machine, you can open up in your favorite code editor. I'm gonna use Visual Studio Code. So here we go. Now the file I'm looking at is in the AWS SFTP server, AWS files folder, and IAM role user base.json. This is the IAM user role and policy that's only going to allow download access as indicated right here. It only has the get object methods. If we check the admin user policy, we have not only the get object, we have the put object and the delete object. So we can do all three operations. And this trust relationship to allow interfacing with both S3 to get the files and also transfer family, which is the SFTP server. So this is a three files we're going to work at in the repo you just cloned. Now it's actually walking into AWS. So we're in AWS. The first thing we have to do is create the S3 buckets that are going to store our files. So I've created two different S3 buckets here. This S3 bucket SFT server temp. This is a bucket that's just going to hold one file that's not actually going to be accessed. This is just for illustration purposes to show we're not able to see this bucket. We only want to be able to see the bucket we want to grant access to, which is this one. So I put one file in here, temp5.txt just for illustration purposes. We should not see this bucket when we connect with WinSCP, whatever FTP client you're using. The bucket we're working with is this one right here. Now what I recommend is I recommend at least creating one bucket right here. You can name it whatever you want. You cannot use the name that I use here though. S3 buckets have to be unique globally, so you have to pick your own unique name here. So here's mine. I created two different folders because I'm gonna have two users, a base user and an admin user. My admin user is gonna be Alex, my base user is going to be John. So in the Alex folder, I created two simple files. If I go back up in the John folder, I also created two simple files. So I'm going to illustrate how we access both of these. And again, the top level bucket is this S3 bucket SFTP server. Again, I recommend creating at least this one with the two folders, Alex and John, or whatever names you want of them, and files in each one of them. You can optionally create this temp bucket that has a, has a single file in it to illustrate that you cannot connect to it. Okay, after you create these S3 buckets, we need to create the IAM roles and policies. So IAM Management Console. So the first thing we want to create is the policy. So we go into the policies, and we're going to create our policies. Now I've already created them previously, but we're going to walk through how to do them here. It's very simple actually. We have the JSON here. We're just going to copy and paste from our files. So let's go back to Visual Studio. We have the IAM role user base. We're just going to copy everything. But before we do, change your S3 bucket name. What's my S3 bucket name? S3 bucket SFTP server. I'm going to copy this and paste it right here. Make sure you don't have a new line in there. And also paste it right here. Make sure you keep this slash here and this asterisk at the end. After you copy your S3 bucket name, you can copy this, go back, go back to the policy, and paste. Next tags, next review, pick a name. AWS FTP server base user. 
and then create policy. Now I've already created so I'm going to click cancel. You would click create policy. And after it's created, we can take a look. User base. And here's our visual editor, just like I showed before. Great. Now we're going to do the same thing with admin. So let's just take a look at it real fast. It's exactly the same, S3 bucket server. So it has a lot more permissions here, allowing the not only download with Git, but also the put and delete. So we can upload objects and also delete objects from that 2P server, only if we have this admin. So we can go back, create another policy. JSON, go back to the Visual Studio Code. IAM role user admin. Again, replace the S3 bucket name with whatever you chose in two locations. Make sure you keep the slash and the asterisk at the end. Control A, Control C, copy everything. Control A, Control V, paste. Next, next, AWS, SFTP, role, admin. Whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Then you create the policy and you rock and roll. I'm going to click cancel because like I said before, I've already created it. All right, so you've created the policies. Now you can create the roles that will use those policies. So we have our roles. We click create role. You can pick whatever we want. We just click ACT for now. Click next. And then we can search for our policy up here. You're going to type in whatever policy you named in the previous section we just did. So I go back to my console. Here's the name for my IAM policy for base users. I'm going to paste it here. Click enter. This, I click next. I don't need a description. You can add one if you want. Then AWS TP server I am role base. We're going to edit this after we create it. So we're going to keep going. Create role. I already have mine created. So I'm going to click leave. Then if we go to our role that we just created, I named mine this one. I am role SFTP user base. After you have it created, you can go into here, go to trust relationships, and we're going to edit the trust policy. Depending on what you selected in the previous section, it's going to look different than this. But very simply, just go into the file, AWS files, same folder, IAM role, user trust relationships, copy all of this, go back, and just paste and update policy. Simple as that. What this is giving us access to is for the role we can access S3 and also the transfer family. But the transfer family is where SFTP server is hosted. Great. After we do that, we can go back go to the role and create another role. It's going to be the same exact thing, except it's now going to be for the admin. Again, we're not using EC2, but we're going to modify the trust relationship afterwards, so it doesn't really matter. Here's our IAM policy SFTP user admin. If it doesn't show up immediately, you can go back, copy from policy you just created, whatever name you chose, and just paste it in the search bar, and it will show up. Click Next. Again, don't need a description. Pick a name, whatever you want. SFTP server... I am role admin, whatever you want, doesn't really matter. Again, we're modify the trust relationship afterwards, create the role. I already created it, so I'm not going to create it. After you've created it, go into the role. That's what I called mine. I am role SFTB user admin, trust relationships, edit trust policy, go back to the code, paste it, and update policy. Great, so what have we done so far? We created the S3 bucket that holds the files and folders for our users. And we created the IAM roles and policies for the base user that can only download and the admin user that can both download, upload, and delete files. Great, so now we can move on to the section where we actually create the AWS SFTP server. So now we're gonna to go to AWS transfer family. You can search for it up here very easily and create server. We're gonna select the first one, SSH file transfer protocol. Click next, service manage, we're gonna use this for now. It's going to be a custom identity provider when we do the password authentication. But for now, we're just going to rely on service manage. Click next. Publicly accessible. That's fine. We're not going to use a custom host name. Click next. We're going to use ES3 to access our files. And login role. We'll create a new role. doesn't really matter. Security policy. You can choose whatever you want. Makes sense to use the latest. We can also use the default. Description. Not a big deal. Private key. We're going to leave this blank. We're not going to have any workflows. 
and display banner. Let's make a simple one. Welcome to the server. A little smiley face. Nice little message when we sign in. Click next. No workflows. Everything looks good. And we'll click create server. All right. It might take a little bit for the server to create. So we'll give it a few minutes and we'll come back to the video after it's done creating. Okay. After the server is done creating, we can actually go into it and start adding users. Add a user. I'll do Alex. Because remember for our S3 bucket, I had this one. And I created two folders, Alex and John. So I'm going to name them accordingly. So I'll make my first one Alex. The role is going to be the admin. So it's going to be able to see everything. Let's scroll down. I am role SAP user admin. Okay. Select the policy. Scroll down. Same thing with admin. Okay. S3 bucket. I'm just three bucket SFTP server. Optional folder. I'm going to leave it blank because it's an admin. And I'll set it to restricted because I don't want them to access any S3 bucket outside of this one. Okay. Now we need to add the SSH key. So we need to create a public private key pair. And the way I'm going to do this on Windows is using Putty Gen. If you don't already have this pre installed, you can easily find it online and install it. After you do, you can click generate. Okay, it's generated a key. We're going to save the private key. We're not going to use a passphrase. We'll go to downloads. Make a new folder. Let's call this SSH key SFTP server. And we'll call this SSH private. Great. And then we'll copy all of this. And there's our public. Scroll up, you see it starts with SSH RSA. Scroll down, add. Great, create the user Alex. Now let's go back, go back to our servers. Click here again, we got another user. Again, go back to the bucket. We have another user, John. So let's name him John. The role, he's not going to be the admin. He's going to be the base, which can only download. Policy, we're going to select the base policy. S3 bucket right here. Optional folder, I name the folder John because it's the only folder we want him to access and we'll set to restrict it. Again, because we only want them to be able to access the John folder. SSH public key. We're just going to use the same public key for convenience because it's easy for us because it's just a tutorial series. In practice, you never want to use the same public key for each one because each user is going to be unique. You don't want reuse of SSH public private keys. You want them unique to each individual user. Great. We'll click add here. All right. So now we got our two users, Alex and John. So let's actually try to sign in. So let's go back to the servers. Click into it. Just make sure we're in the right one. Here's our endpoint. And go to WinSCP. So this is my FTP desktop client. There's other options available like FileZilla, Core FTP. Pick whichever one you're most familiar with. Anyone will do. Click New Session, New Site, Host Name. Go back. We're gonna copy it right here. Go back. We're gonna paste it. Username. We'll do Alex for the first one. We'll do Advanced. SSH. Authentication. Private key file. Now we create ours in the downloads. Right here, private key. Okay. Now we can save this if we want. AWS SFTP server admin. Okay. So we have this save. We can log in. Click yes here just to save the key. Welcome to the server. It's the same message we configured in the beginning. Click continue. Great, now we're inside. And we see we can access both Alex and John's folder. We try to traverse up, we cannot do it. We can only access Alex and John. Click into Alex, here's our two files, temp1, temp2. We can open it, no problem. I have my just documents folder on my local desktop right here. I'm just gonna drag this over. Great, now I have a copy. Now I'm gonna try to delete here. I'm not sure I wanna delete, I'm gonna click yes. I successfully deleted. I'm gonna drag it back in again. I've successfully uploaded. Great. We're done here. So let's close this session. We validate that we were able to log in and both download, upload, and delete. Now let's log in as a John user. New session. We're going to click edit here. Let's call it John. We're using the same 
private key so we don't have to change anything else. Then you click save and log in. Same message, continue. Great, we successfully logged in. Now what are we seeing here? We're only seeing temp3 and temp4. Let's try to go up. Can't go up a directory. Why are we seeing these two files? We go back to AWS, go to S3 bucket, we click into John. We only see temp3 and temp4. This is what we want. John is not an admin user. If we're thinking about SFTP servers in production, on an SFTP server, we have multiple user folders for each individual user. We want to be able to see every single user's folder so we can easily upload, delete, and download files for each individual user. For each user though, we only want them to see their personal folder. We don't want them to know that we have other clients like Alex or Jimmy or Carl. We only want them to see the files specifically allocated to John for John. That's why he only sees temp3 and temp4. He doesn't even know that we named the folder John. This is incredibly powerful and makes life a lot easier. So we can try to download the file. Great, we're able to download. Let's try to delete. Permission denied. We cannot delete. Let's try to upload. Permission denied. Great, we validated. We can only download the file. This is the power of AWS SFTP server. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to do the exact same setup, but use password authentication. I recommend deleting the SFTP server if you're following along because it does incur costs very quickly and you don't want them to run up your bill. After the next video where we configure authentication with password, we'll move on to restricting with IP from both the server level and the user level. And then finally, work on email notifications whenever a file is uploaded to the server. All right, that's it. If you have any comments, just leave a question below and I'll respond as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.